because I've had text bullying situation and I've also had identity theft on Facebook situation with our kids. It's anything that the mind can imagine. There's people out there willing to exploit and take advantage. Does it open them up to bullying? Um, are there sites that they can get access to that they shouldn't have access to? Safe at home, but not alone. The internet now is really the greatest gathering space that has ever been created in human history. New Motion Plus. It's a virtual fun park, pleasure and people galore. But think about it. What if this was the real world? Imagine taking a nine or a ten year old and letting them into that environment for three or four hours without any support. This is not about policing them, this is not about controlling them, it is supporting them to use this technology safely. Would you say that there has been enough education of young people in this respect? Not at all. Young people give information out trustingly to a source they don't really know. In the Nelson area, they're putting that right, with lessons supported by local police for kids as young as nine. I don't think they're too young, as long as it's age appropriate. And what we have to remember also is that paedophiles and predators and criminals are targeting at that age. You got a student signing? It's like driving a car. You don't let a child jump into a car. You give them the skills, um, let them have a few practice runs. This is called a role play. So you're not using real names. 10, 11 year olds, this is already their world. Absolutely. Who's used a cell phone? Who's sent a text message? It's getting younger every year. And there's more to tempt them. New multiplayer action! Chat sites are everywhere. Like gaming sites. What do you think when you, all these other people that you don't know start talking to you? Nothing much. <laughs> so do they seem like friends or like strangers? Mm, kind of like friends. So they try an exercise. Sport is the theme. They're told to chat. The aim? To teach them a basic rule. Not to go and meet somebody from the internet that they do not know. <laughs> They think the chat's all amongst themselves, but then they're told to stop. Simply look at the chat room and watch what happens. Andrea is going to ask if there's anybody else in the chat room. Somebody has said, yeah, I'm still here. Ask this person to send a picture. So now we're talking to somebody that we don't know. They ask the mystery schoolgirl to show herself. So, who wanted to meet me? Are you girls? <laughs> Can you see how easy it is to be tricked on the internet? Did anybody know that this was your teacher? If the you tricks of the trade are all made clear. Why would they send you a picture with a dog in it? Because it makes that adult look a bit more friendly. They say, will you meet me? Please meet me. They're pressuring you now. I want you to say no, just like you would in the street. And you know this is needed. There's no question it's needed. Absolutely, I've met and worked with individuals one-on-one -on -one who have in some way been trapped by this technology. Can you imagine ever being tempted to become friends with someone that you didn't know? No, not really. We have to start at a young age. Because in a few years, these students may well be tempted to connect with strangers. If that man is somewhere else... Laying ground rules now makes that less likely. Never give somebody a picture of yourself. If a predator tries to get sexualised pictures of a young female, he doesn't ask for that picture at the start. He initiates a relationship. He deceives the girl. Please, look, I sent you one of me and my mother. You don't know that. And then over time, through leverage, you will get the sexualized pictures. We can talk as the students get older, the lessons YouTube. will have to change you because... You will get some that, that do want to push the boundaries. If a young 15-year-old is determined to meet somebody that they've met on the internet, Part of our task is to equip them with um, safety measures. It's got to be in an, openly, you know, an open place, it's got to be well lit. Halfway through we teach people to send a text message with a smiley face. If you think that meeting is going wrong, send a, smiley, you know, send a face back that's sad. And that's a red flag for somebody to come in. Can't keep them safe from everything. It is a bit of a minefield for mum and dad. Some of the kids know more about the internet and media sites, social media sites than them. But the message is not to be afraid or embarrassed about taking control. Parents need to be involved with their cyber life. They really do. But teenagers might just think, nope, don't want my parents here. Absolutely, and I think that it starts at a young age. It's the minute we give a cell phone to a child, it shouldn't be a no-go area for a parent. They should have the ability to look at every text message that that child receives. Or with this free app, there's another way for parents to take charge. For example, you can set up the active hours being no text to be received or sent after seven in the evening and then again until eight the next day. Okay, so that 
stops you having to make sure the phones are in the lounge each night. Absolutely. You can limit contacts and block surfing or YouTube. Greg has a daughter and plans to use it. That means that I can control a little bit of what goes on, but also feel that I know who she's communicating with. But you still need some good old-fashioned talking. Who they played with at school, who they hang out with on Facebook. That is normal conversation. We're not invading their space, we're not spying on them, but we are sort of staying in touch with what they're doing. It's a great technology to use. We've just got to get careful about how we use it.